Howdy hackers and welcome to another episode of Fairlight TV. This time we're going to talk about something which is rather complex. It's the C64 memory map and I'm sad to announce is the place where I mess up the most. Storing the wrong value in 01 and then ending up having basic ROM switched in or not. I've done this a number of times and uh, yeah, it, it's quite messy, uh, I must admit. So let's dive into it. Okay, so before you, you have a picture that shows the C64 memory map, I borrowed this from C64 Wiki. Uh, so thanks guys for this. It's, uh, it's better than what I have been able to draw myself, so I might as well use that. Uh, with that as a backdrop, I'm going to try to elaborate a bit more of that. So the C64 has a 16-bit wide address bus which means that it can address 65,536 addresses. This is what we know as 64K, because uh, every K is 1,024 in decimal. So 64K turns in to be 65,536. So that's the address bus. Uh, it also has, of course, a data bus, and the data bus is 8 bits wide, that's why it's called an 8-bit computer, which means that in every address there is an 8-bit piece of information, a byte. So that's why the C64 is said to have 64 kilobyte of memory. It can technically address 64 kilobytes. But the cool thing with the C64 is that it actually has more memory than uh, 64 kilobytes. It has 64 kilobyte RAM, but it also has ROM. And in order to do that, it's equipped with a special version of the 6502 processor. It's the 6510. So the 6510 has two registers, which is internal register to the CPU. Uh, address 0 is the data direction register and then address 1 is the, uh, the actual register where you can set the bank selection. And uh, let's go through the different banks. Uh, so at um, it has 16 kilobytes of ROM. Uh, eight, uh, one of the, one 8k block is the basic ROM. And then it has uh, an 8K uh, block, which is the kernel. Basic ROM is the basic interpreter. That is what uh, reads the basic and executes the command that is in the basic program. Kernel ROM is the screen editor and all the I.O. So the tape routine is there and then it also communicates over the serial bus. Uh, the serial bus is generic, so if, if you are communicating with device 4, which is the printer, or if you're communicating with device 8, on the kernel level they are seen as the same. You have to populate the commands, so it's just facilitating the, the framework for communicating with serial devices. Um, Okay, and then it has memory blocks where it needs to, uh, where it's able to access the I/O. Uh, so the VIC, VIC is the um, the graphics chip, the SID chip, the CIA, the timer chip. Oh yeah, SID is of course this the sound chip. Uh, in case I forgot to say that. But then you also find a I.O. area for connected uh, uh, expansion units such as card cartridges. So DEXX and DFXX are those pages. And we will go through uh, what we see here in front of us. So uh, at the address A1000 or A0000, uh, that probably one zero too much. You can see it on the screen. A1000, if I'm allowed to say that, is the basic ROM. So depending on one of the bits in 01, you can turn basic ROM in or out. So all write commands that the CPU is doing is ending up in the RAM, 
if what's on top is ROM. Uh, but if you read, uh, you would read from the, the, the memory bank that's switched in. So in, if you want to uh, write something underneath the basic, basic block, you can just write ahead. That's just fine. But if you want to read from the RAM, um, then you need to switch out the basic ROM in order to read it. Uh, same thing is, uh, is applicable for the kernel ROM. You can write to it uh, and it will end up in the ROM, RAM underneath. But if you read, it will read from kernel unless kernel is switched out. Uh, the way this works is also a bit peculiar because you can switch out basic ROM separately, but you cannot switch out kernel ROM separately. You need to switch out both basic and kernel. So if you do 37, which is the standard value on 0, 01, you would have ba all the basic ROM and kernel ROM switched in. If you do 36, uh, you switch out the basic ROM and you would only have the kernel ROM. And then you do 34 uh, and then you have only RAM because then you switched also the, uh, the IO here. Uh, so there is, there is uh, a bit of a special thing that needs to be elaborated here because you can see here that you have three blocks. You, on on D1000 you have RAM, character ROM and IO. So, uh, so on D1000, depending on what you say, so if you have 34 in 01, you would see the, uh, the RAM. If you have 30, you can see the character ROM. So this is the only place where the CPU can see the character ROM. But normally, uh, if you have 37, which is the default, you have kernel, IO and basic switched in, which means that the only accessible RAM section in the higher memory is this C1000, which is a very handy way to place machine code routines in basic programs, because basic can only extend up to just before A1000, up to 9F, FF. Um, so C1000 is a very popular place to place uh, your first attempt of coding machine code. Uh, we can have a little look at the IO area. Uh, so Vic is using D1000. There are mirrors all the way up to D3FF. I think they are basically in like 40 hex 40 bytes increments or something like that. So somebody uh, keen to kind of obfuscate their their code can poke into a Vic shadow register, not the actual one at the thousand, but some of the shadow ones up here. But you will probably run into issues if you're running into emulated machines or, or something like the Mega 65 or the DTV or something because they don't fully support the shadow registers. Okay, SID, it's D400. Um, also there you have um, Vic, sorry, SID extensions that uh, if you have a, a second or a third or a fourth SID in the machine, uh, they can be populated somewhere in the memory space and that could be D5, D6 and D7, depending on, on the configuration of it. And then we have the CIA, the DC100 and, and the CIA2. Uh, so this one is for the keyboard and, and all of that, whereas uh, the second one is taking care of the serial communication. And then you have the two I/O slots for for cartridges. If you ha if you look at something like Action Replay, it we use both the DE block and the DF block. If you have a RAM expansion unit, that has its register at DF one hundred. So uh, that's where you communicate if you want to send data back and forth between the C sixty four RAM and the RAM expansion unit. Oh yeah, and then the color RAM. So uh, in many of the graphics mode of the C64, the background color of, of an individual character is in this block. So from D800 to DB, well, it's actually DBE8, but the, the block extends all the way to DBFF, even if the last few bytes are never displayed as color memory. So this is the C64 memory map. So what we discussed so far has been the C64 CPU memory map. 
we do also have the Vic memory map. The Vic has only got 14 uh, address lines, so it can only see 16 kilobytes of memory at the same time. Uh, there is a register in DD00, uh, so DD100, uh, where the two lowest bits select Vic Bank. So you can select Vic Bank out of the, the four banks available. Default is the bank from, uh, from zero up to three FFF. Uh, but just changing those two bits can change uh, everything to, to the next bank or the next bank or the next bank. So there are four different banks. If you, if you are familiar with the Amiga, you had the chip memory, which is the one which is accessible to all the chips. And then you had fast memory, which is only available for the CPU. The C64 didn't have, or it doesn't have that kind of a structure. You can select which bank is sort of chip memory here, um, because that is the bank that's the, uh, that the VIX chip is accessing. Uh, there is one peculiarity that you might want to uh, reference as well, and that is the fact that uh, the, the VIC sees uh, font memory at the address 1000 and the address, I think it's 9000. So if you want to set a VIC bank, uh, you have um, like a, a, a mirror or, or a, a vision of the font available to the VIC inside bank, bank 0 and bank 2, but not in bank 1 and bank 3, which is rather strange because uh, D1000 D is in bank 3 and there VIC cannot see it. Uh, that's only for the CPU to see it. Uh, yeah, but that's the way it is. So if you are placing your own font in the RAM at 1000, and you expect it to, to be visible, it's not. You still see the, uh, the, the general font because, the, because Vic is reading from the font memory before it sees what's in the RAM. Uh, so don't, that's why it's very handy to change for, for Vic Bank from 4000 to 7FFF because that is plain RAM. It's plain RAM for both the Vic and the CPU. I hope this has enlightened your understanding of the C64 memory map, at least uh, a slight fraction. So, just to conclude this, I'd like to kind of ask you a philosophical question. Does the C64 actually have C64K byte of RAM? Yes, it does. But it's not available to the CPU. Address 0 and address 1 are not accessible to the CPU. It will only see its internal register. But they are available to the VIC. So if you would like to see what's in address 0 and address 1, you can do something like showing a sprite uh, where the in bank 0, where the content of that sprite is picking its data from address 0 and address 1. There you will see the content, the real RAM content of the C64 address 0 and 1. Isn't that amazing? See you in the next one.